Startups are built on trial and error. You build, you test, you iterate, and that's how you build a great product. However, that's not the best approach to legal. Trial and error with legal can get pretty expensive. My name is Kyle Westaway, and I'm an attorney that works with early stage founders. After working with hundreds of startups, here are the most common mistakes that I've seen and tips on how to avoid them. Number one, splitting the equity evenly upfront. Look, it's really common for founders to just split the equity evenly amongst themselves whenever they're starting a company. So say three of us are starting a company, we just split third, 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 and get to work. What often happens is that at least one of those founders within the first year, there's some issue with them. They either can't contribute the value that everybody had hoped they would be able to, maybe they've lost interest, or they wanna just move on to another project. Now, if you've issued all that equity up front, Here's the challenge. They have a significant portion of ownership of the company, but they're not adding any value. And that's what we call the zombie founder. We wanna avoid having zombie founders. So in order to do that, what you need to do is make sure that even the founders are on vesting schedule. That means that they're earning their equity out over time, and that vesting schedule should have a one-year cliff, meaning that they don't earn any of the equity until that first year has elapsed. Creating a year of time working together allows you to make sure that everybody's a really good fit, and if somebody's not a good fit, it's easy for them to walk away without creating the zombie founder scenario. Number two, not assigning intellectual property to the company. So here's the deal. You're launching your company, you're working with your friends night and day to make your product really shine. That means a lot of people are contributing really important ideas and intellectual property to the company. You're probably not spending a lot of time hashing through who has created what. The challenge with that is by law, by default, when you create a piece of intellectual property, it's yours. And so if that employee or contractor hasn't assigned that to the company, then they can come back years later and sue the company for millions of dollars potentially because the company is using their intellectual property. So in order to avoid that situation, you wanna make sure everybody signs a tech assignment agreement Agreement. This is sometimes called a PIIA or a CIIA. This agreement just says something really simple that the creator of the IP is assigning that IP to the company and the company can use it however they want to. This will be really important to ensure that you have a solid base of intellectual property to build your company upon. Number three, not creating an employee equity pool. So as you're building your early stage startup, you'll want to attract high caliber talent. You probably don't have the funding to pay them at their market rate. You'll need to pay them in equity. Now, if the founders have split up all of the shares of the company amongst themselves, there is no equity to give to these rock star contributors. And so you're not able to attract this talent. In order to make sure that you're able to attract great talent, you have to set up an employee equity pool from the outset. This is a certain set of shares that are set aside, that are exclusively given to employees and contractors that are building the company. So make sure to set that up at the outset and not wait till later. Number four, not clarifying equity grants. Whenever you are issuing equity to employees, it's really important to ensure that you're clear on whether you're issuing them stock options or stock grants. Stock grants are a grant of common shares in the company at that time, as opposed to stock options, which give the employee an opportunity to purchase later at a discounted price. Now, each of these have different tax implications for the employees, so it's really important to clarify which one you're giving. You really wanna avoid a situation where you leave the employee with a big tax pill or some very unpleasant surprise. So when you're issuing equity, make sure that you're clear on whether you're issuing stock options or stock grants. Number five, copying and pasting your privacy policy. Let's be honest, privacy policies are usually an afterthought. You're focused on building your product and you realize kind of the day before launch that you have to throw something up there. So you copy and paste something from somebody else's website and throw it up there and call it a day. The challenge with this is that the regulatory environment around privacy is getting increasingly complex. Liabilities are getting higher and higher. So if you make an inadvertent misstep, you can oftentimes find yourselves on the wrong end of a pretty steep fine. So in order to avoid that, it's pretty simple. Make sure that you're working with a lawyer that understands exactly what your product does and is drafting a privacy policy that works specifically for your company. Number six, spamming everyone with NDAs. Many first-time founders have a huge fear that someone's gonna steal their brilliant idea. And so they spam everyone with a non-disclosure agreement or an NDA. The challenge is that this can turn off potential partners. If you're asking a VC to sign an NDA before they have the first conversation with you, you're probably outing yourself as a rookie. The solution for this, make sure that you can talk about your company at two levels. The first level is one that gives a really clear articulation of what the value proposition of the company is and how you're doing what you're doing. You go to market strategy, et cetera. 
but doesn't give any detail on super proprietary pieces of that puzzle. And then you have another level of information that you're willing to share with people once they sign an NDA, and that's the purely proprietary information that you may have as a company. This is usually maybe the, the second, third, or fourth conversation that you're having with somebody, not the first. And that's an appropriate time to use the NDA. Number seven, stacking safes. Safes are amazing instruments. The simple agreement for future equity is a standardized agreement that allows founders to bring money in in a very quick and seamless way. They're almost too easy to use though is the problem. And many founders find themselves stacking safe on safe on safe on safe without really understanding the implications of what that's gonna mean for them when these safes convert. Imagine you have a series A and you, when all of these safes convert, you realize this big chunk of equity that you thought you had has now been diluted down to a small sliver. And that's probably pretty demoralizing for you as a founder because the idea is that you're building this company with a lot of sweat equity so that someday you'll reap the benefit. You and your family will see the upside financially from all this hard work. But instead, maybe you've, you've inadvertently given all of that value to safe holders. And then secondarily, this makes your company a lot less attractive for venture capitalists in the future. So in order to avoid this, make sure that every time you issue a safe, you're updating your pro forma cap table and understanding exactly what the dilution will be for you and your founders. If you do that, you'll avoid any unpleasant surprises and set yourself up for success. Navigating legal decisions as a founder is tough. That's where we come in. We try to help you make smarter decisions, and that's what this channel is all about. So if you're interested in practical insights on how to make better legal decisions as a founder, make sure to subscribe to this channel. And lastly, remember, none of this is legal advice. Please seek great, competent startup counsel as you're trying to make these decisions for your company. And if you don't have any, feel free to reach out to us at westaway.co.